Hey, fellow van lifers and sprinter van owners, my fellow campers. Hey, today I'm going to do a quick little van maintenance. It's one of the things that really I do probably most frequently of all things I do in my van, and is rotation of tires. I try to rotate them about every 5,000 miles, make sure I'm getting good wear and tear on the tires, and it's even and spread uh, throughout. So, I'm going to walk through a couple little uh, tips for you on rotating your tires. Um, and uh, so I'm going to walk through that today. I'm also going to do a little bit of review on this Terra Wagon Sprinter Van Wheel Stud Wheel Locator uh, stud thing. So I forget exactly what they call these. Anyways, I'm going to try these out for the first time. It, I'm hoping it'll make it a lot easier. I'm actually going to go ahead and time uh, how long it's going to take me to align a new wheel tire onto this hub once I take this one off and compare it with another um, wheel tire tub when I go do that one with these. So one without these and one with these. So we're going to see just how much these help. I have a feeling they're going to help quite a bit because this is a little bit of a frustrating thing on the Mercedes Sprinter van is locating the wheel uh, and getting all the studs uh, or the, uh, the lugs lined up. So we're going to see how it goes. Um, first of all, uh, first tip is, yes, you should probably be rotating your your wheels and tires about every 5,000 miles. That is a recommend, recommend, recommendation from most tire manufacturers. Some say as little as 3,000, some say as much as 10,000. Most say it's around that 5,000 mile mark. Um, the sooner you do it, the less wear and tear problem at problems that can occur, irregular wear patterns, things like that that can occur um, in the tires. And it is a bit of work. You generally need one floor jack like I have right here, um, the concealable frame. I use two. Um, I place one under an appropriate place to lift it and it needs to be a strong enough capacity to lift at least a quarter of the way of the van. I say really ideally a quarter, at least a more like a third to a half. So you got some spare capacity, but also because you get a more weight front or rear. So however much your van weighs, let's say it's 10,000 pounds, you really need that, that jack to be able to support at least 3,000 pounds of capacity. Give you a little bit of spare capacity, um, but also make sure that if you have more weight front or back, you've got that covered. So I really suggest you have at least a two ton. I use three ton to um, uh, three ton uh, and up floor jacks. Um, that really helps. Um, and anyways, by using two, I have redundancy. That way I don't put a floor jack, um, a stand under there, um, which is a lot more work and time. It is extra effort, it is less safe. So I wanna make that very clear. I never get underneath the vehicle, underneath the wheel or tire when I'm doing this. Um, but there is definitely always a risk or safety issue in doing this. So if you don't feel safe doing it on your own, pay someone to do it. Um, who knows how to do it and can do it safely or make sure you have the appropriate tools and, and uh, safety uh, operations in place to do this right. Um, the other thing is um, you need a really big uh, breaker iron or ratchet. Um, I use both a ratchet to help both take them off when they start getting loose and put it back on when they're still loose. And then just a big breaker bar with the appropriate size 19 millimeter socket. Um, I'm pretty sure it's 19 millimeters. Um, I can't remember, but yeah, I'm pretty sure it's 19 millimeter socket um, that goes on there. This one's actually specifically made for uh, for aluminum wheels because it has a, a plastic protective covering on the outside so you don't scratch the aluminum wheels. And you have to be careful that when you are operating with these, you don't just lay the wheel down because these wheels do stick out um, either, either equal to or slightly proud of the sidewall. And so if you just lay them down on your concrete floor or wherever you're working, or there's a little stone down there, you can get a, a scratch into your wheel. So uh, make sure you're laying down on the opposing side or just keep standing up like I have the spare here ready to go that just came off my owl. Uh, spare tire ladder carry on the back door. So I've already got that off before I start lifting the van. I've taken the spare off. My rotation pattern that I'm using, which is a pretty accepted rotation pattern everyone seems to go by for an all-wheel drive or four-wheel drive vehicle, is to put the spare onto your passenger side rear. The passenger side rear goes to your passenger side front. Passenger side front goes to your driver's side rear. And the driver's side rear goes to the driver's side front. That tire, the driver's side front, 
now goes, that was on there, goes to your spare location. So by doing this about every 5,000 miles, about every course four rotations to five rotations, you have done a complete rotation of these. I guess really every five rotations when you count the spare in there. I include my spare into the rotation. You do not need to do that. I have a full size spare tired wheel, so I like to rotate it in. That makes sure that I am getting um, basically um, uh, 20 percent more uh, life out of those tires because I'm rotating the spare in. So that's a fifth tire instead of just four tires that are being included within the road, the wear of those over time. Some people argue it's better to just keep the spare just always as a spare. It's got total good tread. But the reality is why have a perfectly good tread that you've never used always just sitting on the back when you've got bad tread and all the other tires, right? It's really you want kind of good tread all the way around in all the tires and on your spare tire if it's got the same equal tread as what you have going around well it's going to get the same traction it's got the same thickness it's not going to throw off abs sensors or other wheel speed sensors and traction control aids and things like that that you have when you throw that spare on and it's brand new and all of your tires are very worn it just makes no sense it's going to it, your abs and traction control um systems are going to not they're gonna report an error or possibly could or not work properly. It's better, in my opinion, to keep all those tires at an equal wear so you don't have those issues with those electronic track control and ABS systems um, that you do have. And that way also, like I said, you basically get 20% longer wear out of your tires, which are the most expensive thing on a modern vehicle, period, for all of your maintenance costs in that entire vehicle, um, other than some kind of unplanned mechanical failure. Um, when you add in oil changes and other fluid changes and filter changes and things like that, if you do them yourself like I do, those costs are minuscule compared to the cost of the tires. The tires are our biggest cost. So you might as well, of course, reduce the cost of that by 20%. That's substantial. So hence why I do it that way. So I'm gonna go ahead and stop this video right now. I'm gonna please pause it. Um, I'll come back after I go ahead and take this wheel off. We'll try we'll measure how much time it takes to put the replacement wheel on and then compare it with the front when we're putting this tire wheel onto the front with using these uh wheel stud uh alignment tools all right looking forward to it all right thanks hang in there and uh also make sure you subscribe because i'm always adding new videos i have tons more videos that are in the works um right now and I'm looking forward to sharing those with you on tips on van life, van maintenance, um, also uh, conversion uh, of, your, for, of your, your van, whether it's a sprinter van or other vans. So look forward to sharing more with you. Thanks for watching. And uh, here we go. We're gonna start this time now to put on the new wheel tire from the spare, that was the spare tire onto this rear without using those alignment pins. And we'll see how long this takes. Perhaps it's also a little bit slower for me because I'm a little bit conservative and cautious in that I don't raise the truck any more than about a quarter of an inch higher than needs to be to get the tire under there. Um, that way, if, uh, anyways, just from a safety aspect, but also it means I don't have to lift this pretty heavy tire and wheel up which I can't matter how much it weighs. I want to say it's probably about 70 pounds, a combination of wheel and tire. Um, I don't have to lift those up now um, onto uh, the, um, you know, onto the, uh, um, this is why I use a socket and a breaker bar and I have to get my torque wrench out, which I forgot to get that before I started this video. But anyways, I'll use the socket here, just kind of get these at the moment, finger tight, and I'm gonna go around in a, in a clockwise pattern, um, always uh, basically go in that star pattern, where you go to the next opposite one, and then come back around again, and that makes sure you get a nice even bolt pattern. Now I'm gonna get my torque wrench and get these torqued down to, I think it's 133 foot-pounds, 
um, per wheel. And um, uh, anyways, I don't get any higher than I need to, but that means I don't have to lift the tires high either. So that's roughly the time to get it set up. So now I'm gonna go and torque these down and then we'll go measure the time it takes to get uh, these tires onto uh, the, uh, the, the front with the alignment pins. Okay, Casey back here. Now we're on the passenger side front. I've got all the lug nuts off or lug bolts off. We're gonna go ahead and take this, I'm gonna take this wheel off. Sometimes they're a little bit stuck when you first uh, take all the bolts off there. So anyways, I've got it raised just barely off, the, so the tire's just barely off the ground. I'm gonna pull this off. I'm gonna just simply roll it out of the way instead of rolling it all the way around the van just to save time and safety aspects of not having the van elevated for too long before getting this replacement wheel and tire in here. So I'm gonna do that right now. I'm gonna get the wheel turned there, and then I'm gonna go ahead and install these uh, uh, two Terra, uh, uh, Terra Van um, uh, wheel stud alignment uh, pins. They're made of a nice lightweight aluminum. They've got a knurled end there uh, to grab with your hand after you put the wheel through. And you can see they're even a tapered, maybe hard to see in this, but they're tapered um, like a, uh, a long cartridge uh, a large cartridge uh, uh, rifle bullet. Um, so that way the, the wheel can go on and get aligned um, with two of them. So we'll see how this goes. Hopefully it'll go smoothly. By the way, just so you know, from a safety aspect, they do have the van raised up on two floor jacks. They're each capable of supporting at least the weight of, uh, they're each individually capable of supporting at least the weight in this corner of the van. Um, there's two of them. Um, still, you make sure you do this in a way that's safe for you. Never get your hands or any other body parts underneath the tire or any other part of the van that's lifted just in case something does slip and uh, you don't want to get yourself at risk at all or get your head into the wheel well. Um, but while you do have the wheel off, it's a really good time to both inspect the, the tire, um, the inside of the tire, which is harder to see from when it's on the van. Um, uh, the inside of the wheel, the outside of the wheel, clean up any dirt or anything that's in the inside of there, um, and uh, and also the wheel hub um, as well as just looking for any kind of like any rust or any damage that may be to um, the wheel hub itself, the studs, um, or in this case really bolts, lug bolts, and so we can make sure everything just still looks safe. It's also a good time while it's off, and not that I'm gonna take a lot of time to do this, because um, I do inspect my van pretty regularly, but just to simply look in um, in the front here is a lot of drivetrain uh, elements. You got the transmission, you can see the bottom of the oil pan, um, you can see the uh, transfer case, front differential, uh, the half shafts, the CV, bolt, uh, CV joints, things like that. So it's really good time just to look at all those things. We got the wheel off where it's easy to see and just make sure that if there's any big issues that you at least are aware of it or any issues you're aware of it so you can always do something about it now or at another time. Like I said, sometimes uh, these wheels get a bit um, stuck onto the wheel hub. It's a bit of a pain getting them off. And at the same time, you don't want to just like, rock the van or bang on it while it's up in the air. So, <sighs> what I'm doing here is kind of rotating it to keep loosening it putting some lever effect on the wheel um, while I'm rotating. So it's not anything real jarring or a lot of force onto the van. And you can see the, the wheel's about a, tire's about a quarter of an inch off the ground. And there we go. Well, like I said, I'm just gonna simply set that aside. Just gonna blow out any dust, make sure everything's okay there. I've already looked at this wheel, make sure it looks okay. Just gonna do a quick inspection, make sure everything looks good. Oh, forgot these alignment pins. Let's get these in there. I'm not sure there's any real magic as to, or necessity as to which ones these get put onto. Um, I'm gonna actually try putting these onto just two that are fairly much across from each other and uh, to make it pretty easy, I'm gonna go ahead and screw them in all the way, but not tight. In that way, um, don't have any worry, risk about damaging a thread um, while this is getting put on. And so I'm gonna slide the wheel into here. 
and there it is it's on the on the pins okay so now it's on those pins without even looking I should be able to just in a finger tight fashion I say finger tight um, using the socket here just lightly screw in these other bolts and you can see I'm not even looking into the hole of where these bolts are I can't even see them from where I am I'm simply just screwing these in it's a massive improvement already um, to be able to, to get that going now of course I need to unscrew these and I have to say without the wheel being really fully tightened on there can be a little challenging to get these that aren't quite entirely as long as they need to be with the wheel just slightly uh, very lightly tight these uh, lug bolts so I just may go around again here well there you have it my uh, GoPro camera ended up uh, dying on me uh, while I was uh, finishing up this video so I'm gonna finish up the video with a nice photo of my van here on a recent camping trip and uh, yes got the tires uh, all rotated all five of them and so that was great to be able to do that and complete that it did turn out that the Terra wagon wheel alignment tool uh, did definitely save time but mostly saved effort um, it, it went for about two hours and 30 seconds for the one wheel to about two minutes for the wheel with the wheel, wheel alignment pin that is including the time to screw those two pins in and remove them uh, so you can find them at terrawagon.com I do not get any kind of uh, of uh, uh, discount or or payment or anything from them this is just purely my own review of this of this product I think it's good it's worthy it certainly saves a lot of uh, time effort but mostly uh, the effort and the also that increases the safety to decrease that time while you're uh, working on it so anyways um, that's also some other tips for uh, uh, changing out and rotating your tires hopefully it was helpful certainly subscribe and uh, look forward to sharing more with you soon all right bye